Good? Okay. So in the freeze mode, you see the water starting to trickle back on. I showed this water stopped running. It's to prevent slushing with this pump. So it's starting to come back on now, it'll go full force. We are going to a different pump. Right now this is a 24 volt DC pump. Real easy to diagnose once you know what to look for. You walk up, no water's flowing out of here. We got a high water line on the board. That pump should be running. Reach down, it feels like it is. We're not pumping any water. Then it's wired into a power supply on this side of the unit over here. All right, this power supply has a green light on it. If you guys want to come over and take a look at this. This power supply has, it's a 24 volt DC pump. All right, so that green light right there, if that's on solid, we should be going good. If it's blinking, if it's out completely, we're gonna check power back from the power, from the control board. If it's flashing, that tells you we have a bad water pump. It interrupts power back to the power supply. We should have 24 volts going out. Okay, you can either go 115 or 230 into this, and then it converts it to 24 volt going to the pump to run the pump. That's all going to go away event real soon too. That pump's going to get changed out. Power supply. This is the bin probe that I was talking about. The big orange sticker that says make sure you install it. All right, it just goes down through here on this one. It goes right in there. You just cut that zip tie. And you drop this whole thing right down there. That'll keep it from moving. And then if you leave the tape on there. Everything you just push it right down through the hole, and it'll stop with this little flared top. So. Very important to do that. So that's everything else. The other machine, the big, the 1064s and the GB5s, it's right in the front when you take the front cover off. All right, but on this, we have no place to put it. So on the GT5s and the GT3s, it'll be over on the side. But just remember, you always have to have a good point. Hot gas valve, high pressure switch. All right, again, that's all automatic. Get used to this hole in the metal right here is where our high pressure switch reset button used to be. It was a green orange push button. Alright, so that's eliminated. You just have to let it cool down and kick back on as soon as it so it's going to be warmed up. Cools off. Pumps back running. As you can see now this float slowly dropping down. All right, and that'll continue to drop down, like I said, until we get over to here. That'll run over the dam. We'll see that here shortly. The float plugs in at the top of the board, top right-hand corner, and then your EVAP probe, and they're marked right on the board. EVAP, and then your bin is underneath that. And then these are your switches up here. Okay. Power wires down at the bottom corner. First three connector down here. If you, if you get a, you have to do a board change out. We're just going to unplug this, this plus bar here, and those three pieces right here. Unplug it. There's four screws. You take the new one out. Put your power wires back down here, green, white, black. Plug everything. In, put the four screws in. Plug it back in. Plug everything back in, and we get a new board. Eight o'clock? No, I was. I'm sorry, I didn't know. About ten minutes ago, you think? Roughly. I went to a really good guy I had on one of our SCs, and it was at a Southern Tier Brewery. So, have you ever heard of Southern Tier Brewery? Uh, they, they're Anheuser Busch bottom. It's over by where I live. And we have an under counter. They put a distillery in the back in another building they've gotten so big and uh, so I was swapping their checking their SC couldn't get anybody to work on it so I went down and I was checking it I said yeah I said the six screwed up we need to replace it so I made the determination came back put the new one in the guy says taps are open I don't know if you got to go back to work or not so I said watch three batches of ice <laughs> and beers at the end of the day. So I'm going home after this one. <laughs> that was the best job I ever had right there. <laughs> Put your run of the taps. 
compressor should be cooled in the touch, a little warmer on the bottom, the top should be cooled. Just like any other compressor that you're going to run across, you can feel it if it's real hot. We should never have any frost here, we call it frost on the pumpkin, all right? If you're getting frost here, there's going to be a TXV adjustment here. This won't clip that, there's a cap that goes over the TXV, and you can turn that with your service tool in or out. All right. If you get half, if you open this, when this opens up and you got half of it, like this way, not front to back, but left to right, we're missing some ice cubes and it's hollow, open your TXV up, quarter turn at a time. And that should fill that in, dress away for whatever reason. Fans, we can replace the blades or just the motor or the whole, the whole assembly. You don't usually don't have much issue there. Like I said, we're going to the new pump, and once we get this taken care of, there's not going to be a whole lot left. If you go wrong. <laughs> we're hopefully dumbing that up a little bit. So. You walk in, and these are you know, this is pulled up to here, you have a pretty good idea it's going to be too much water going into the system. You know what it's going to look like. So we'll run another batch, I'll move that up and go hollow the full. Big thing is set up, this is a 400 pound bin that it's sitting on. So big thing to set up as level as you can get it, front to back, left to right. Condenser. As you can see, we're going to suck in air. All right, so we've got the vents on. It's going to come out the front, the side. Get rid of, get rid of the air on the sides and the front. A lot of people go, there's no air blowing on the other side. <laughs> That's true. So if you have to clean that out, you can go in and get your nitrogen in this side. And the whole thing like that. A fault three, or third, or fault three is going to be a long freeze time. Biggest problems with that is first check to make sure your pump's running. You get a long freeze time with that because the water will be sitting up there and you'll just have a frozen mess. And your condenser, it's air cooled, make sure your condenser is cleaned out. Those are the two biggest factors. People want a full cube so they raise the water level, well, so that's going to increase your time, and then we're going to start allowing it up. You got to be done in 35 minutes, or it's going to say, I'm done. So if we over freeze that cube, we have too much water in it, it's going to take too long to make it, and we're going to alarm out. Is that after one long freeze? It'll, it'll lock flash, out? flash after one, and three in a row it'll lock out. Is that the same with the high pressure? Because you said it was automatically reset. Yeah, you won't get any. You won't get anything there. You won't get anything. Even if it does it, say three times repetitively. Correct. No, no error code. No. Okay. You're not going to get an error code. Get, you don't get on many four, four fours anymore. That's for this, mm -hmm. all right? One is usually your evaporator probe, and you can see the evaporator probe is hooked to the evaporator right on the right-hand side here with a stainless clip. Okay. Like I said, that's going to go away, hopefully, but that's where that's hooked down to. Pull it off, check it, put it in ice water, then you can see right where that, yep. And but you got good frost, everything looks good. If you get, ever get a fault seven before we eliminate this, you get a fault seven on the control board, that means more than likely these are both open or both closed. The front one's open, the back one, the flash should be back here. All right, so they're, but if they ever read the same, the board's saying, am I open or am I closed? It doesn't know what to do, so we get that fault seven. 
and we've got to put this one at 12. And this one, when the plate is up, the front one that's going to be on the flap, the switch is going to be open, and the back one will be closed. And then when it's open, we put the back one on the flap, and that's where it comes in handy if you ever need to run that up and down so you can set these operators. Model serial number not on the back. Just had a guy call me the other day. And there's a 305 number on the back, and everybody thinks that's a serial number. So because it'll give you half of the the, uh, the model, and then that gives you the AC, the full cube at the end, but it'll give you the GT, I think it says GT5, GB5 or something on the back. So they read off that and give you a real. So I know exactly where they're reading on it. Wouldn't do that. It's right here. So everybody can see it. We don't want you to struggle. No surprise. <laughs> Do that cracking? Yeah. Keep it closer. Yep. Yeah. And then as soon as it drops, we're water levels here, and as soon as that starts to drop down, you'll see this will continue. This started out, it was probably right on the left edge here, that stream of water, and now we're in more towards the middle, so that'll slowly creep forward as we're building pressure in that ice cube. And that will all, and then when that goes over, that drains the rest of the water out. This one drops, and that's what sends it into harvest. This is your harvest float, and this is your fill float. This used to be a set when I was building, I called it a rat's nest, it was just, and, it, and it's better now even with our, excuse me, with the new starting components out of there, it's at least you can get in there and wire it, which is more to go to shove it in. <laughs> <laughs> well, nothing fell apart. <laughs> but we try not to have you have to get into any of the bundles. Very rarely if something goes, we've got a bad wiring harness or something that just, just can't find it, you know, find where the break is. <coughs> you shouldn't have to get into those at all. Famous last word, I'll get a call next week. Hey, <laughs> guess what? <laughs> I 
again, if you start running long and you're going, this is going to break something, if I let this thing go, you can always take this hose off here, at the, do it at the flow, right on this end, not at the tank end, but take it off here and that will run the water out. Job assignment already or you Chatham. Chatham? Chatham? Boston. Boston. Oh, <laughs> they like to keep us on our toes. <laughs> <laughs> they have uh, GPS for your trucks. They know right where you're at, how long you've been there, all that good stuff. Oh, exactly. <laughs> hard turning, hard braking, <laughs> hard oh, acceleration. Really? Oh, yeah. Huh. Interesting. They got it all. Yeah. Arctic's doing that in New York. They're just going to that. They told me that last time. There's a good benefit though, you know, they relay that to the insurance company. That's exactly what it's great. Yeah, it's not yeah. really a police you guys. No. It's kind of save money. Exactly. I guess by the I'd probably do the same thing. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> How hard are you turning in my video? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know you could monitor a hard turn. Oh yeah. It's pretty interesting. Well, it doesn't surprise me that you can't <laughs> do anything you want. Man, this thing got whacked. That looks like it. I'm going to try to set about too many times. That's expedient shipping. <laughs> yeah. 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 Make sure if you guys get there and you're doing a setup, if there's any damage at all, tell the engineer, call the shipping company got to do a clean. Cold is not going to pay for it. You know, I'll yeah. have it out. <coughs> Alright, go ahead and look up in there and you can see my pinky in those holes, go ahead. Get your finger up there, you can see where it's at. Way too big. All right, this is the first cycle. I would probably just throw this batch anyways. All right, it's, I'm gonna let it go. We'll let it go one more time where it sits and see what it looks like, and then we'll adjust on that one. Who knows how long it's been here, it's a little warmer in here. It should be good. I would say on the next cycle. If you get a new control board, and on the instructions, it's going to tell you if you have a dual EVAP and it, on this jumper, full rinse and dual EVAP, it says. There's little covers here. On the full rinse one, there's one on it. The dual one, there's not. The only time you can do the dual one is when you have a 1064. So you got to have that on. When we send the boards out, we don't know, they don't know where, which machine it's going to. So they just always send them with both of those on there. So if that dual jumper is on there, your machine's going to sit just like this. It's not going to, because it's looking for that other plate, the second plate up top, to say, hey, I'm closed. You know, this other switch here that would be up on the top. <coughs> and so it's not going to do anything. It's just going to sit there. So new board, that's one thing I'm conditioned myself. Make sure that's off, pull that boom jumper. We just take a piece of scotch tape or something, stick it to the side in case you ever need it here. So right now it's reading the EVAP probe. I don't have my screwdriver, but it's sitting there. There we go. Warmed up. Besides the hole, that's what that should look like. Nice and hard, it's got the cracks and the fissures in it. And as you see, when I throw this, they're pretty hard. Yeah. <laughs> Most cubes would 
you know, shatter, but I mean, they are the density of them, that's why they like to go crazy. But that's the look you should have is that. Cracks and fissures, hold it up, it looks good. There's no white in it, that means there's no air in the lines. That would be the first thing, and if not, it's, then it's gonna be that TPS. So, but good cube, it just needs that filled in just a little bit. And end users are picky about that hole. I would think that would be just fine in my drink, but they don't want anything there. If they want it solid, it solid to be, so. All right. Okay, good. We'll watch one more bag. You know what? I'll, uh, go again. I just raised that one and moved it about even. And the Z wants this to be done a like quarter after 11.30. Get you guys back out making money. So I just, I'm gonna, before that freezes up, if you want to drop that, like, I, this didn't take my change. Okay. All right, so I did it, so I want to drop it all, fill it, start over. Now it'll fill back up to where I just moved that from. Um, right, if not, you got to sit for all 25 minutes and wait again. Wait again. That's no fun. Okay.